are you doing? Wednesday. Moving on. New, new week. New week. New challenge. Tell me what you want to get from last week. <laughs> talk, well, all right. <laughs> let's talk about third and one. Uh, toss to Charles Sims. Third yeah. One. Okay. Uh, let's. Does everybody get this straight? All right. I screwed it up. Nobody else. I screwed it up. Plain and simple. All right. We had a check play on. We had a check play on where we were checking on the goal line uh, based on the <laughs> personnel. They had some injuries, so they switched some guys around. I gave Jameis bad information. 100, 1,000, whatever number you want to use, percent on me. Nobody else. Simple. All right? That's, that's simple. Put that to bed. I screwed it up. I got to live with it. Feel horrible. I can't take it back. I did it. Was, uh, was there any way to check out of that at that point? <laughs> It was a check, right? It was yeah, a check yeah. to begin with. Yeah. We were we were out of timeouts. Yeah. Uh, we were out of timeouts. I mean, uh, bad by me, a hundred percent. Blame that on me. Hey, Coach, you talked about only having two wide receivers in, in the uh, second half once Murph went down in the first, and then yeah. Jack in the third. Yeah, difficult. We had four wide receivers up for the game. We lost two. You're down to two wide receivers, so about half our call sheet was out the window in the second half. It's unfortunate. Uh, I've never had that happen before or where we were where we were, couldn't run everything that we wanted to run. Uh, we were juggling some stuff around with the tight ends, you know, getting a, getting an extra tight end in there. And our three tight ends did an awesome job of doing some things that we hadn't practiced. So, you know, from the from basically the first play of the second half on, but it did it did affect how we called stuff because one thing is now when you can't get in your three wides, you can't guarantee if you're gonna get them in nickel or not. In their nickel defense, they they now control it a lot more than, than we have control. So that's unfortunate, but that you know that really didn't have an impact on the game. I mean, we still had plenty of chances to win it, regardless of that. But that that was a, that was is that one of those things in the NFL when you only have uh, we had uh, what was the number twenty guys up on offense, twenty guys up counting a backup quarterback, and you know, you know uh, we had it happen once last year in Atlanta where you only got seven old linemen dressed. And two old linemen got hurt. We had to play the whole fourth quarter against the Vikings with the tight end playing tackle. It's just that's one of the really weird things about the NFL, and unfortunate, but happened. Sir, is uh, Vincent Jackson out for Sunday? I don't know the answer to that. That's a question you're going to have to ask for Coach Smith. I, mean, I don't talk about that. You know, that's injuries isn't my deal. How much would that adjust your game plan going into this game? If you, well, Vincent's an excellent player, so it's not going to change our game plan. But you know, we. we if you lose any good player in any position, you know, it affects you. Coach, oh, uh, it is Winston's uh, progress the last couple of weeks. Like James has taken a couple of big steps. James did a really nice job in this game. Played his best game. Uh, did a nice job. Didn't turn the ball over. Made good decisions. Got the ball out of his hand. Got the ball out of his hand early. The, the first uh, <clears throat> the double move to Mike. The timing, if you watch that on tape, when he lets that go where Mike is. I mean, fantastic. James, James did a really nice job. Coach, um, is too much sometimes made of coaches when they play their former teams as far as the <laughs> intel you're able to give? Or is there some legitimacy to that? Uh, there might be a little bit, but probably too much made of it. Yeah. Sir, and this is obviously not on you, but the defense has been killed by slants. From the offensive perspective, <coughs> what's the key to running a good slant route? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. What do you mean you don't know? Of course you know. Yeah, I know. But I, I guess I'm just choosing not to answer that. I mean, that's again, that's talk, ask me about our offense. I'll be glad to tell you. Why don't you run more slants? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Sir, could you talk a little bit more about maybe some of the nuances that you saw from Jameis this particular week? Maybe a couple of instances where you where you saw specific growth. Okay. Well, the one the one as I said is. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had a tendency on his deep routes to be waiting too long. You know, common with the young quarterback, they want to see it. By the time they see it, they outrun him. They outrun his arm. James has a strong arm. So the, the first deep ball to Mike, that was a good one. The other one was uh, the second series when we went down there. We had the third and two, I think. We ran the <coughs> naked boot, and he threw the ball away out of the back of the end zone. I mean, you, you talk about hard for James to throw it away on the goal line. I mean, he. Every quarterback out there is dying to throw a touchdown pass from the two-yard line. So, I mean, there, there's two right there. And, uh, I mean, Jameis, 
We had a lot of check stuff, check check plays on the road with crowd noise. We were we were having a lot of issues with uh, my headset. My coach, the quarterback, going out with him, and, and Jameis he handled that like a champ. Did a nice job. How did he handle that specifically? Did he just like call his own play? Like a champ. Like a champ. <laughs> did he call his own play or? Uh, no, he just he he fixed it. And but we were down on the clock. If you notice in that second half, after after Vincent got hurt, when we were down to two wideouts. We were down on the clock a lot because we were juggling, juggling groups, and like he was sometimes talking to the tight ends coming out of the huddle, reminding them because uh, based on which tight end was in the game, they were sometimes doing jobs they don't normally do. And uh, again, Jameis, Jameis is growing fast. I mean, he's he's doing a good job right now. We got to keep it up. But Jameis, Jameis played good enough in that game for us to win. I'm sure you're seeing your share now of eight-man fronts the way you're running the football. Um, Atlanta seems to be a sellout on the run type team. Um, so is this another, I don't know if it's Houston, Mike, but is this another one of those games where they're going to challenge your quarterback? Uh, Houston, when Houston did that, they played a lot more man coverage than Atlanta plays. Atlanta's still primarily a zone team. Atlanta is very good against against the run. Uh, they do they do like to overpopulate the, populate the box. They usually have one more guy than you do. Um, is that one of these games? Maybe I don't, I don't know that yet, but uh, you know we're we're still going to try to run the ball. That's sure. not that's not a big secret. So there may not be a huge advantage for you playing your former team, but there's a little advantage. I mean, you do know their offense better than most, and you know that they've got a lot of firepower. So how do you keep up? And of course, you guys had a lot of firepower last week in the, against the Redskins. But how do you keep up with the Falcons' offensive firepower? Well, again, that's not a question for me. Uh, because I, I don't worry about their firepower. I can tell our coaches and our players what I know about their players, but they're not running the same offense. I mean, they're running, they're running a different offense when I was there. I mean, I can tell them about, you know, the two tackles were there when I was there. Of course, Matt, Julio, Roddy, and Devontae Freeman. I can tell them some about individual players' strengths and weaknesses, but they don't need me to tell them how good Julio Jones is. I mean, turn, turn the film on. So uh, that part, uh, it, minimal. Best. I mean, I, I I really can't help them too much. I don't I don't study their offense. I don't watch I watch the other side of the ball, so I'm not I can't help them too much in that area. Sir, what makes Matt Ryan so good? Matt Ryan, uh, great leader, extremely smart, very tough, excellent passer, good decision maker, takes accountability, uh, face of your franchise, exactly what you want. I mean, excellent, excellent. You know, so much of is situational football, and, and for as good as your offense did, we've already talked about third and one. But on the big run by Doug Martin inside five minutes with the lead, was there was there a big part of you that said, "Please stay in bounds"? Uh, situational football. That that is an excellent point, and you know, we did not we talk about situational football a lot. We did not handle situational football as well as we need to to go where we want to go. Doug was thinking about scoring a touchdown. And if you really watch that play, and I've watched it 15,000 times, whether it's from the wide copy or the end zone copy, that's pretty borderline if he was in or not. And, and you can't really see either official signal. Uh, now, maybe it's just because the film's cut off. But uh, Doug was trying to score a touchdown. <clears throat> that guy came from a long way away. That was a nice play by him, by Breland, I believe it was, yeah. to, to get him. But I think with that much time, I think you're probably asking a lot right there because the player's probably thinking, I'm going to score a touchdown, and if I get pushed out on the three, four, I think five, whatever it was, we're probably going to score anyway. Now, if you're down in, we weren't in what you call four-minute offense, okay? We practice four-minute offense every week where we're trying to waste time, but we were not in four-minute offense at that point in the game. So I, I think that's probably asking a lot. If Vincent Jackson doesn't play, Dante Dye, I would assume would see more playing time like he did in the second half. What do you like about that young receiver? Uh, explosive, excellent speed, tough, and uh, you know, just one of those guys. Nobody knows much about him because he comes from a small school, but he's he's done nothing but improve since he got here. He's, you know, some rookies start off strong in uh, OTAs, made it through training camp, and then they kind of plateau out. Uh, Dee Dee has has continued to ascend throughout the season, so uh, he'll he'll do fine. And uh, you know, if that's the case, then he'll, he'll be fine. Right. I, know, I know Jameis is just starting out, but would you put this division up against any other in football as far as quarterback play? Oh, boy. I, I, I am not prepared to answer that.
that question, I don't, I don't know the answer. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the three other quarterbacks in this league, in this division, because I've been in it, are are really good players. But um, I don't even think I couldn't even name all the quarterbacks in the other division. <laughs> I probably could if I was a test. I mean, my life depended on it. But I don't know. That's, I don't know. <coughs> you look back on your time in Atlanta and just how did that kind of influence you as a coach? And what, what was that period of life like? <laughs> Uh, wow, you guys are asking heavy questions. <laughs> I mean, the first thing that pops in my head, again, I don't, I don't go around thinking like that, but first thing that pops in my head is I got a chance to be around some, some great players and uh, some great coaches. So, you know, you get a chance to be around Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Roddy White. I mean, think about the guys we had there, Mike Turner, uh, Devin Hester, the all-time leading return guy in the league. I mean, I, I had three fun years in Atlanta. Was, first year was the most fun because we won the most games, but uh, I got to work with some great players and some great coaches. I mean, and I same thing here. I do the same thing here. Enjoying, enjoying every second of it, except when I screw up plays on the goal line. How much talk, <laughs> couple more guys. How much talk has been around this league about what you guys, when you were with the Falcons, were able to do in week three? Oh, uh, <coughs> a little bit. I mean, a little bit, none by me. Okay, a little, a little bit, but uh, you know, players that were in games like that, they remember it. Player, players and coaches. I mean, just like I'll remember this Washington game for the rest of my life. I'll, I mean, you remember, you remember things that you mess up way more than you remember your your greatest victories. I think anyway. And uh, so you know, that game last year, I I don't think about it at all. But uh, yeah, there's been a little talk about it. But again, not by me. You'd have to ask other people more about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Coach.